Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Alexandria and Anastasia Duval? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll go through the background of Alexandria and Anastasia Duval. I'll move to the timeline of the alleged crime, and then I'll offer my analysis. Alexandria and Anastasia Duval were born in Utica, New York in 1978. They were identical twins. When they were born, their names were Allison and Anne Dadow. When they were five years old, their mother died from an aneurysm. The twins were very close growing up. In high school, they were both cheerleaders. In 2008, they would open their own yoga studio in Palm Beach County, Florida, called Twin Power Yoga. The twin theme was dominant throughout their lives, not just in their business. For example, it was reflected in their choice of vehicles. They drove matching Porsche convertible sports cars. The cars were boxsters, so nothing to get excited about. It wasn't like they were driving 911 Turbo S's or something like a 911 Cabriolet. When somebody hears the name Porsche, and then they hear Boxster, it's kind of a disappointment. It's like somebody telling you that you're going to have a chance to meet a Baldwin brother, and then you find out it's Stephen. The women had a good deal of success in their studio. They were considering expanding. Reality TV producers approached them and convinced them to expand more aggressively. So they were looking to add on in the area where they already were. It would have been relatively affordable, but these producers wanted them to get an entirely different studio, one that was in an expensive area in West Palm Beach, Florida. The twins did this in order to improve their chances of having this show. When the reality TV deal fell through, the women could not afford the lease. They made other financial mistakes outside of just this interaction with the reality TV producers. The twins closed their studio in 2014. They did not pay their employees, and of course their customers who had memberships, couldn't do anything with them after that. So they lost their investment as well. Later, Alexandria would deny those claims. The twins moved to Park City, Utah. This is another pricey area. It's a ski town. They opened yet another yoga studio. Their troubles continued in Utah. They had a number of interactions with law enforcement, like driving under the influence, disorderly conduct, assaulting a police officer, and leaving the scene of an accident. To offer a few more specifics, they got kicked out of a restaurant for being intoxicated, and they were involved in an automobile collision. The police would say that their vehicle slid into a ditch. They fought with each other and with the police officers after the police arrived. The police noted that hair pulling was involved. The twins changed their names from Allison and Anne to Alexandria and Anastasia. It appears as though this was done so they could write a book together. The women went bankrupt. They were $150,000 in debt, and of course they owed money on their Porsche Boxsters. The twins decided to go on a religious quest in December of 2015. They moved to Hawaii. Their drinking continued. Not long after arriving, they were arrested for disorderly conduct and terroristic threatening over an incident that occurred on Christmas Eve. In Hawaii, both twins had boyfriends who lived with them in a large rental in Maui. Now moving to May 29, 2016. The twins were in a Ford Explorer owned by Alexandria's boyfriend. Alexandria was driving the vehicle on Hannah Highway. This is a winding road that's known for its scenic view. Anastasia was in the passenger seat. The SUV accelerated, made a hard left turn, and crashed into a low wall made of rock. It continued on and traveled over a 200-foot cliff. Anastasia was killed in the collision. Alexandria was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Alexandria would be charged with secondary murder on June 3, 2016, in connection with Anastasia's death. A judge dismissed that charge and released her on June 8, saying there was not enough evidence to support the murder charge. Later, a grand jury would indict her. Alexandria would be arrested in Albany, New York, on November 11, 2016, she was extradited to Hawaii. Now moving to my analysis. 
Alexandria waived her right to a trial by jury. She opted to have the judge decide her fate instead. This is known as a bench trial. Usually, with bench trials, these are for like complex cases where the defendant or the defendant's attorney might think that the judge can get more into the nuances of the case and appreciate the argument for innocence a little better. Typically, if somebody's guilty, they would not elect for a bench trial. The prosecution was arguing that Alexandria intentionally or knowingly drove off a cliff as she fought with her sister. First, I'll take a look at the prosecution's case, and then I'll look at the defense. A man named Frederico Bailey was Anastasia's boyfriend. He said that on the day of the accident, he was on a camping trip with the twins. It was supposed to be just Bailey and Anastasia, but Alexandria insisted on going along. The twins left together in the SUV, but then came back. So they left Bailey there and then returned. They seemed to be in a better mood, but Bailey noticed they had purchased alcohol. The twins started arguing, and they drove off again in the SUV. They were on Hannah Highway. Several witnesses saw a variety of unusual actions. The women were screaming and arguing with each other. Physical fighting was occurring, including punching. The passenger of the vehicle was grabbing the steering wheel and pulling the driver's hair. At one point, the SUV was stopped with the hazard lights on. One witness said he heard the SUV's engine rev just before it accelerated in a straight line, only then to pull to the left and travel over the cliff. So it turned left, hit that wall made of rock, and then went over the cliff. The witness did not see brake lights. Data from the vehicle's control module supported the idea that the brakes were never activated. The prosecution painted this picture where the two women were arguing, the vehicle was pulled over at some point, then Alexandria accelerated and drove off the cliff. I would imagine the theory was that she wanted to end both of their lives, as there was no reason to expect that she would survive and her sister would not. The prosecution also noted that that particular area where they drove off the cliff was the only place near their location where that would have been possible. So if Alexandria had turned anywhere else in any other direction, there would have been no trip over the cliff. Several behaviors were noticed in the hospital after the accident that seemed to help the prosecution. One, an officer testified that Alexandria had alcohol on her breath when he approached her at the hospital in August of 2016, so just a few months after her sister died in a fatal collision, Alexandria was accused of driving under the influence in the state of New York. Her blood alcohol content was 0.26. She pleaded not guilty in that case. Moving on to the next item, number two. Alexandria was described as hysterical, but she showed a lack of emotion and was not crying. So I find this interesting because those don't seem congruent. If somebody is hysterical, they are showing emotion. It's not a lack of emotion. So these were the thoughts the police officer had. Perhaps he wasn't trained in how emotions appear or what is an emotion and what is not. Moving to the next item, number three. This was the last behavior noticed in the hospital. We see here that Alexandria allegedly made a statement to her boyfriend telling him that he was talking too much to the police. After Alexandria was released from the hospital, there were a few other behaviors that also seemed to work for the prosecution. According to Bailey, Alexandria put on Anastasia's clothes, including clothing Anastasia had worn just a few days before her death. Also, allegedly, Alexandria made not-so-subtle romantic advances toward Bailey, like cuddling with him, sitting down really close beside him, and putting her head on his shoulder. Now looking at the case for the defense. The defense argued that strands of Alexandria's hair were found in Anastasia's hands, making it look as though Anastasia was the aggressor. Eyewitnesses indicated that the passenger was pulling the driver's hair so hard that the driver's head was moving to the passenger side of the vehicle. It is pretty difficult to drive when your head is not on the driver's side of the vehicle, right? So that seems to be something necessary for safe driving most of the time. The defense also argued that the cliff could not be seen from the area where the sharp left turn was made due to the low wall. So Alexandria should not have known that that particular churn 
would lead the vehicle over the cliff. Another key point for the defense was their attack of Frederico Bailey. Again, he was Anastasia's boyfriend. His testimony was not favorable, of course, to Alexandria, so it makes sense that the defense would go after him. Under cross-examination, he admitted he only met Anastasia 35 days before she died. He was living in his Jeep when he met Anastasia, and she invited him to come live with her and her sister. After his death, he lived in Anastasia's Porsche Boxster. Functioning as a home is just one more thing a Boxster isn't good at. But to be fair, a 911 isn't a good residence either. When Bailey was asked how he made a living, he said he was a minister and he was dependent on Jesus Christ to provide for him. The judge would find Alexandria Duvall not guilty. He believed that the collision was caused by Anastasia. So what do I think happened in this case? There are three main theories. We see accident, homicide, and suicide. I don't think the sisters wanted to commit suicide. There was no evidence that they ever talked about that in their prior interactions. I don't think this case involved homicide either. Certainly there was a reasonable doubt, but I don't actually think that Alexandria did it even beyond the legal standard. I don't think she committed a murder here. However, I'm not sure if I would call this an accident either. So really, I don't think that any of the three theories make a lot of sense. But of course, one of them has to be true, or perhaps a combination of more than one. I think there was recklessness here on the part of both sisters. They were involved in an altercation at one of the worst possible times. In the final moments before the collision, it was probably Anastasia who caused the collision, but they both contributed to being in that situation. I'm not sure if there was any crime on the part of Alexandria, but certainly her behavior was not consistent with good judgment. So I put this somewhere between accent and homicide. Again, it's not really either one, so we don't really have a crime. And looking at how these sisters lived their lives, it seems as though they drank excessively and fought frequently. Often these two activities would coincide. Recklessness seemed to be the norm. There was little concern about being arrested. There was a lot of impulsivity. They made quick decisions that were not smart. People who knew them said that their personalities would change when they drank. When they were not drinking, they were full of life, funny, they worked well together, they were productive. When they were drinking, the fun was over. Violence was often the outcome. When people struggle with alcohol intake, they tend to believe everything's just going to work out on its own. They don't worry about consequences. They live in the moment as if unknown and unseen forces will somehow come to their rescue. These forces will fix things for them. They don't worry about anything but enjoyment or stopping pain. A good example of this is Alexandria allegedly drinking and driving in New York while facing an indictment by a grand jury in Hawaii. Dangerous lifestyles can come with big penalties. I think that's what happened in this case. These two were reckless. They didn't think things through. They continued to fight on a public road, endangering themselves and others. As far as the women being twins, I think this could have contributed to what happened. Perhaps they developed this aggressive interaction style when they were young and just never grew out of it. They would fight like they were trying to kill each other, and then the next moment they would be sitting quietly like nothing happened. Another element to consider is that drinking is often associated with not maturing. Like when somebody starts drinking, they get stuck at that stage of development. So essentially, they were acting like children in a world that had adult consequences. I think the lessons learned in this case are fairly straightforward. Violence is not the answer. Actions have consequences. And it is not a good idea to add alcohol and motor vehicles to an argument. Those are my thoughts in the case of Alexandria and Anastasia Duval. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.